Hello everyone. I guess you could probably see where I am. And that is in the aviary. Okay, so yeah. I must confess. I think that I think I've been doing well not necessarily doing wrong but I think there are some things that I can do better for the Victorian crown pigeons so our family recently went on a vacation to Discovery Cove <laughs> Thomas wants to talk instead of me but we went to, on a vacation down to Orlando. Uh, one of the places that we went while we were on our vacation was to Discovery Cove. <laughs> Discovery Cove is an all-inclusive day park, or uh, yeah, I guess that's what you would call it, a day park, that um, has different things there. You can swim with the dolphins. You can swim in a tropical reef with uh fish and sharks and stingrays and of course the sharks are behind glass um or you can go on a lazy river and see marmosets and also river otters um but that's not that's not what interests us um we have a little girl in our family who is 13 years old and she is fascinated by birds she has been since just about the day she was born. And Discovery Cove has an awesome aviary. It's actually, it's three different aviaries. And in these three aviaries, there are different species of birds that are housed there. And you get to interact with these birds. You get to feed the birds. Um, you get to speak with the uh, trainers there about the different species and ask questions and they're very knowledgeable. So it just so happens that at Discovery Cove, they had Victoria crown pigeons, but they didn't have a pair. They have two males. While we were visiting, of course, Mary Carl had many questions in which they answered for her about different species. But my main question was about the Victoria crown pigeons. Now, while I have a pair of these birds and I've taken you along with our journey to try to encourage the female who has built an elaborate nest, Rocky and Bandit are playing. I still have some, some questions that I need answers to. And one of my main questions to them was, what do they feed the birds there? And they walked me through this process. So they use the same food for all three aviaries. And what they recommended for me was to use a soft bill food. Now, a soft bill bird is a specific type of bird. Um, I don't even know what all the breeds or the, the species are that are soft billed, but there are, there are many different ones. And they also advised that I use a parrot food. Now you may be thinking, well, these birds are far from parrots, but while they are far from parrots, they also have a lot of the same nutritional requirements. So they recommended that I use that in addition to the soft bill food. When I started talking to her about the possibilities of why this female has not laid an egg yet, it crossed her mind that she may need some more calcium in her diet. They recommended that I just add a calcium supplement meant for birds such as grit in a powder form and sprinkle it on her food. Or their food. We talked about the amount of light. We talked about um, the enclosure. We talked about stress. All of those things we feel like are under control, but the feed may need to be changed. Um, she did suggest that I continue to use the pigeon feed that I've been feeding them. I've been using a high quality pigeon 
feed. She suggested that I soak the fruit, the um, the soft bill food, and the and the parrot food in a little bit of apple juice, and that would just simply make it more palatable for the birds. Now, as time goes on and they get used to it, I could in turn use water versus apple juice, but she suggested using apple juice to begin with to entice them to want to try something a little bit different. Now, I won't make this change all at one time. I will, you know, mix it and I will continue to add the pigeon pellets or the pigeon feed to this blend of soft bill food and parrot food along with the calcium. But today, we just got back and Mary Carl was out here sitting in the aviary and she witnessed something that we have not seen before. And let me show y'all what it was. So if that didn't uh, get your get your encouragement up that she may be gonna lay an egg soon, I don't know what will. But you can see here, the nest is still very, very tall. It's very tight. It's very elaborate. The, um, the keepers at Discovery Cove could not believe it because they had never, never actually seen uh, Victoria crown pigeon nest because there again they have two males but you can see that it has the uh it has quite an indention in the top I just feel like we're getting really close so uh while there are some material still on the ground um I'm gonna do something that I haven't done before and a lot of you guys have suggested that I use um, animal hair and different things like that that she could use to soften up the nest a little bit. Well, my dogs all have treatment for fleas and ticks and they take heartworm medication. And I, didn't, I, I don't want that to, to be passed on to anything that the birds would pick up in their beak and potentially harm them. And that goes for Mildred's hair or the goat's hair. They, they've all been wormed. They all have, um, you know, different chemicals in them that help them, but may in turn turn around and harm the birds. So I don't want to do that. But recently we had an event at Petals from the Past in Jemison, Alabama. It was a meet and greet. And a nice lady that came to the meet and greet brought me a little surprise. Okay, so the nice lady brought me this surprise and I've got her card here for anybody that, that may be interested in, in reaching out to her. Um, she no longer is in business as I understood, but she does have a lot of fiber available that she could sell. Um, now she uses this mainly for making arts and crafts, but she brought it to me for a whole different purpose. And I bet you guys can figure out what that is. It's for nesting material. And this is, um, this is natural alpaca hair and it has not been treated with anything. Her um, animals are all natural and she brought me two bags of two different colors and she wanted me to see if the birds would use this for nesting material. I think I'm just going to put it down here and maybe separate it into bigger wads, so to speak, and just give her the opportunity to um, see if this might be something that she's interested in to soften up the nest area if it's not we're okay i mean it's, it's no big deal but i'll keep a watch out and i'll let you guys keep a watch out and see if see if this may be something that interests them and you can see there's there's some little there's sticks there's twigs there's mulch there's there's several there's pine straw um 
there's different things still in here that if they wanted to add to the nest, they have the ability to. So I'm not gonna go out and, and gather more material because I think that they're very satisfied. But y'all, I feel like, I feel like we're closer than ever. I really do. You can see the males in the back. He's a bit smaller than her. She's in the front. Uh, he does have a silver band on his leg and she has a more orangey pink band. Um, that was the first time today what Mary Carl caught on camera. That's the first time that we've ever witnessed them mating. And in Mary Carl's pigeons that she has, after they mate, they lay an egg within a week. So if that'll be, if that's the case with these birds is to be found out. But they are a type of pigeon. And if, if it follows the way hers do, then we may have an egg sooner than later. When we put the um, two little ringneck doves in here, uh, a lot of you guys commented that we need to put a way for them to nest in here. And we did do that rather quickly. However, I did not show it on camera. The suggested nesting for ringneck doves is simply a milk jug cut with a hole in it. And we provided that. We provided that as soon as those doves came to live here. But they haven't used it. Let me tell you what I think's going on. So here's what I think going on. You see the big Victoria crown pigeon nest in the back here. You can't miss it, right? What is what is this little mess going on right here? I don't think that the crown pigeons have put this material here. I think, and Mary Carl tends to think so too, that the ringneck doves are trying to build a nest beside the Victoria crown pigeon. Now that we haven't seen them using this or sitting in it, we haven't seen any activity, but that's just what we think. And you can look and see up there in the top, there's one, there's two. And it may not be that, that, that they're the ones that have made this little area here, but I think they're trying to, I think they're trying to show these bigger birds that they can build a nest just as elaborate as theirs. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to uh, freeze dry something. And I want y'all to come along too, because I think this is gonna be interesting. told you guys that we were going to freeze dry something and today I'm gonna do a little something different. I'm gonna freeze dry broccoli and I have pre-frozen broccoli florets that I'm going to place on the trays and freeze dry. It's something that our family loves as a snack when it's just raw so I'm thinking that this freeze dried will be something that we can put in our car when we go on, you know, when we make just little short trips to town, anything. And it'll be a healthy snack for us all. So I'm gonna be interested to see how this turns out because I don't know what to expect. And like I said earlier, I did pre-freeze it because it cut so much time off the freeze drying process. So, I'm going to finish getting these trays filled up and pop these in the freeze dryer. See all these little tiny pieces that just froze and kind of broke off the, the head of the broccoli? I'm not going to do that because I think it's going to turn out like powder. And I'm not trying to add this to recipes. I'm trying to use it as a snack that you can just pick up and eat. So, therefore, I'm just going to stick with the big pieces. Now later on, if this works out, I may do some fresh from our garden. It'll be next year because broccoli likes cool weather and we lost ours this winter due to the um, flash freeze that we had here in Alabama. 
But hopefully if ours produces next year, then I'll definitely freeze dry it because there's nothing like fresh broccoli. All right, so I have four trays here filled with the frozen broccoli florets. And now the easy process, and that is just popping them in the freeze dryer and letting it do the work for you. Okay, so we're out here at the Harvest Right freeze dryer where you're gonna see how simple this process is. I've showed you guys before, but in case you missed it, all we're going to do is pop the trays in, get them lined up straight. And I haven't mentioned this before, but I wanted to let you guys know that have asked. This is a medium freeze dryer, and we're a family of three, four plus my mom. This size works out well for us. However, I'm kind of feeling like once our garden gets to go in and we have an excess of vegetables that we want to save for season that we can't grow vegetables in, we may be more satisfied with the bigger unit, but we do have the medium, so we're gonna, we're gonna continue on with that. But um, I just wanted to let you guys know that this is the medium freeze dryer and it holds the four trays. So I've got my food in. I locked the door. Now, here's the simple part. Mashing a button. Start. Do not mix frozen and non-frozen trays. Mine is pre-frozen. Hit pre-frozen. And it tells you here that it's pre-freezing. So it's cooling it back down to 32 degrees. Even though it's frozen, it's going to cool the machine down to 32 degrees, not necessarily the food. That's gonna come along with it. And um, we're gonna see how long this process takes for some freeze-dried broccoli. All right, so that beeping noise means the process is complete. And I'm gonna defrost it, don't you think? Yeah. But that doesn't mean that I can't take the product out. Right. So I turn the valve. Now you can open the door. Yeah. <laughs> That's a silky rooster. <laughs> All right, so, oh, wow. How are they? Crunchy. Don't touch. Oh, I was going to eat one? <laughs> no, we got to take them in. Got to wait. Okay, we'll take them in. You got to take them in. Okay. Mm. <laughs> That's not fair. This is this is mine. Mm. That's not fair. Okay. So it's a small tree. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite. <laughs> That's my favorite too. Mm. Holly sounds like it's her favorite too. Look. Holly, see it. <laughs> Come here. See it. Good girl. <coughs> It's, it's so much of her favorite, she's got to take it outside. Okay. You do it. <clears throat> can you see it? Can I see it? Good girl. Arlo can see it. Well, Holly wants to know. Can you see it, Arlo? Arlo, see it? He's scared now that somebody's going to get it. They like it. Everybody loves it. I think it's because of the texture. Well... We can eat healthy treats, can't we, babies? Okay, so my new favorite. Look how light it is. Man, and crunchy and airy and still has flavor. Perfection. I like that. A I just, lot. I just so happened to have some cauliflower. You want to do it next? I'm going to do it next. I know it's going to turn out about like this. Yeah. So I won't show it being done, but we're going to do it for us. Mm. to have it on hand and still planning to do eggs yeah we've just got to i think it's going to be a dozen per tray so i've got to come up with four dozen right. excess right. eggs but as soon as i do that's going to be an experiment that i can't wait to try i like it a lot so crunch on 
You may can put like, I like it like it is. Oh, I got but, a good idea. Stay but right you up. could put some kind of seasoning on top. I got a good idea. <laughs> Get the ranch ice cream. <laughs> see, see, I remember on our live, if you watch our live, we tried this ranch ice cream on the live and it was absolutely terrible. It was awful. But if you dip the broccoli in it, yeah. It might make it taste a little bit better. I'll try that. But look, I want to show you something. Go ahead. I want to show you something. Though. I want to show you something before I waste a piece. <laughs> this is the stem. Mm -hmm. We know how broccoli stems are. Yeah, you always toss those. These are delicious. Well, let me give it a try myself. Ain't it? You don't have to buy florets. No. You can buy a head of broccoli and yeah. use the whole thing. You could. The stem is just as crunchy and airy as the, the florette part is. Wow. I think this was a success. Oh, too. You know, like that ranch seasoning? Holly wants another one. <laughs> you could sprinkle that on it. Yeah, I've got some if you of wanted, that. If you wanted to do that, but you wouldn't have to. Yeah, it doesn't need anything. Uh-uh. I like it. Broccoli is our new favorite. All right. Yay.